The lever lock was invented in the late 18th century by an Englishman. At the time, the ward lock with its simple concentric plate mechanism was the main kind of lock in use. It was medieval technology and fairly easy to pick. The lever lock took security to a whole new level. More than two centuries after their invention, lever locks are still on security duty. The mechanism hasn't changed much, except instead of two levers, there can be many inside. They fall into slots, locking the bolt until a key lifts the levers. This lever mechanism is very rugged. It will continue to function even if dirt or moisture infiltrates the lock. It's why many armed forces will only use this kind of lock. To make the two halves of the lock body, they uncoil a narrow band of heavy steel. Rollers straighten it. Then a punch press shapes and cuts out the part. Four punches produce a fully formed part. The front half includes the side flange, the keyhole, a post and rivet holes. The parts tumble with wood chips and the friction removes unwanted bits called burrs. The chips also absorb residual oil from punch pressing. They punch out the lock levers and other parts. They plate all 23 parts with yellow zinc. Next, rivets funnel into a network of tubing. They tumble four at a time into an assembly device. There are different sized rivets to fit different sized holes. The delivery system pushes the rivets up through holes in the assembly device. A factory worker places the back of a lock body on the rivets and a hydraulic press squeezes them into place. He keeps a stash of rivets at the workbench in the event that the tubing doesn't deliver. The back of the lock body is now ready to receive the lock mechanism. There are 240 different lever combinations. The next worker determines which one to use. She places the bolt lever in the casing and slides all the other levers onto a rivet. There are a total of six levers in this particular padlock. Some locks have more, some have less. The more levers there are, the tougher the lock is to pick. She wraps a metal spring around a rivet and then hinges the shackle to a third post. She sets the back half aside and assembles the keyhole cover to the front part of the lock. She winds a spring around a post and places the cover over it. The spring will allow the cover to be swung open and shut. A rivet secures the keyhole cover. She now brings the two lock body halves together so the rivets from the back protrude through the front. She flattens the rivets to hold the parts together. The next part is the clevis. It's a U-shaped attachment for a chain to make the lock easier to hang on to when not in lockdown mode. Another worker now categorizes the locks in separate boxes according to the key code. He leaves a key code ID card in each box. When transferring a lock for painting, that ID card goes with it. This system prevents mix-ups so that later they'll be able to make keys to match. They spray the locks military green and give them four coats for corrosion resistance. It's time to rev up the key cutter. There are 240 key profiles to match the 240 lever lock combinations. The operator sets the blades in the desired sequence and carves the keys to give them the right geometry. With the correct profile, the key lifts and lowers the levers in the lock to open and close it. A standard padlock comes with two keys. If the owner loses them both, the lock will usually need to be replaced. That's because the key code is never written on the lock body to avoid tipping off thieves. The technician confirms that both keys work and this lever padlock is now ready to thwart criminals and safeguard possessions.